dissolution, war and political aims. Without going into strategic and military details, we will just sketch the dominant positions of three Bosnian peoples, as articulated through their elites, political, cultural, military, economic etc. For Serbs, the entire Bosnia was Serbian land, and the goal was to occupy it all. What is crucial is this, since Slobodan Milosevic's plan, and virtually the plan of the entire Serbian elite, was not limited to Bosnia, it aimed primarily at amputation of the approximately 70% of Croatia, following the Yugoslav People's Maneuvers Line from 1986 and, striking at five directions, to slice the Croatian territory in a few indefensible pockets, leaving Zagreb, Rijeka and Istria parts as some kind of reliquy reliquiarum, and probably forcing Croatian leadership to capitulate completely, having achieved the goal of conquering the entire Croatia, and Bosnia, these two countries were, militarily, one war occupation zone. But, Serbian Yugoslav plans were thwarted in all directions, first, Vajdin, Pakrats, Banja Luka, second, Shid, Vukova and Vinkovci, third, Zada, Shibenik, Kanin, Travar, fourth, Split and Mostar, and fifth, Dubrovnik, Trebinja, and Montenegro. So, they were holding approximately 25% of Croatia's territory at the end of 1991. The dominant goal was all Serbs in one, Serbian state, with policy toward Croats oscillating from vandalism and ethnic pressures, to outright ethnic cleansing and genocide. Their idea was to destroy Croatian nationhood wherever possible, to occupy three million out of four and half million Croats, and, to get rid of them most by a combination of killing, cleansing, forced assimilation, encouraging Croatian regional identities as non-Croat, for instance, Croatian Bonjivsi, and pressure to emigrate. As regards Bosnian Muslims, it is not clear what the final goal was, so there was a difference between strategy and tactics. Judging from the actions of Serbian elite, they first tried to split so-called natural alliance between Croats and Muslims, by offering Bosnian Muslim politicians, like Adil Zulfikar Pasic, a historical compromise between Serbs and Muslims, which would result in incorporation of almost the entire Bosnia, with possible exception of tiny Croatian majority parts, into extended Serbia, and, theoretically guaranteeing Muslims some kind of autonomous existence, without war, if they distance themselves from Croatia. But, since the whole Serbian elite was radically against everything Catholic and Muslim, as something utterly alien and non-Serbian, various conspiracy theories including the Vatican, Pan-Islamism, Masons, European West etc., it is evident, judging both from Serbian mass media, torrent of pan-Serbian publications, and, historical books and pamphlets, that coexistence with Muslims was impossible in the long run. In a nutshell, with just a few dissenting voices, the dominant Serbian discourse was, that Catholic Croats and Bosniak Muslims, were Serbian historical civilizational enemies, and there was no room for clearly articulated, Croatian, and Bosniak or Muslim identity, in a Serbian nation-state. Bosnian Muslims, later Bosniaks, attitudes have been more complex and sometimes contradictory. From the current vantage point, it seems they had been generally satisfied with their position in Yugoslavia, and wanted this country to continue to exist, as it had been during Tito's rule. They wanted national crystallization, but not completely. They were mostly content with the status of a recognized people, without fully completed cultural, historical, national individuality, perhaps this has something to do with the nature of Islamic civilization, which puts religion first and isn't too conducive to European-style national emancipation. Although they wanted to stay in Yugoslavia, it was not Yugoslavia according to Serbian ideas, as articulated by Milosevic and Serbian elites. Without Slovenia and Croatia, they knew it would be, essentially, an extended Serbia. Also, being unarmed, 
they were terrified by images of destruction and war in Croatia in 1991, so they wanted to avoid Yugoslav army aggression and mass killings. Yugoslav army had, after withdrawal from Slovenia, transferred and amassed military machinery to Bosnia, tanks, planes, armored cars, howitzers, helicopters, ammunition, rocket launchers, rifles, machine guns. Also, the Yugoslav officer corps until 1990 was Serbianized, 69.7% were Serbs and Montenegrins, and after 1990, almost completely Serbianized, Serbs and Montenegrins constituting over 98% of military personnel. With first democratic elections, Bosnian Muslims gave the majority of their votes to Party of Democratic Action, a party with Islamist leadership, headed by ex-political convict Alija Izit Bagovic. Although this Muslim party had, like all parties, a few fractions, the chief aims were to avoid Yugoslav attack on Bosnian Muslims, and, to retain Bosnia as a unitary republic, rejecting all proposals for internal reconstruction along national, ethnic lines, as well as to work on re-Islamization of a rather secular Muslims. Is it Bagovic's famous statement, this is not our war, reflected the majority Bosnian Muslim position on the Yugoslav, Serbian and Montenegrin war of aggression in Croatia. It was not just because of fear of the Serbianized Yugoslav army military might, it also showed genuine and prevalent Bosnian Muslims' attitude, that it was a war between Serbs and Croats, hence, Muslims had no stake in the game, but, also, the dominant Muslim theory of false equivalence, with regard to two sides in the conflict, avoiding at all costs to name Serbian Yugoslav army side as the aggressor. This policy enraged not only Croatia, but even more Croats in Bosnia, who had been fighting in the defense of Croatia, for instance, during the siege of Vukova approximately 60-70% of Croatian units' manpower consisted of Croats from Bosnia. Also, Muslim leadership turned a blind eye on the Yugoslav army destruction of Croatian village Ravno in Herzegovina, which could be considered the real beginning of war in Bosnia, but Bosnian Muslims were looking the other way, and, suspiciously, had failed to notice it, because there were no Muslims attacked. Summarily, it could be said that the dominant Bosnian Muslim policy was dictated by fear of Yugoslav army military aggression, they saw what was happening in Croatia, that they wanted to preserve Bosnia as a state, that they opposed any internal reconfiguration of Bosnia and Herzegovina, along national lines, that they wanted re-Islamization of their own people, and, had put all their trust in the international community, hoping it would prevent carnage in Bosnia, evidently, they didn't learn anything from the war in Croatia. Also, judging from works and deeds of Alija Izit Bagovic, and some of his associates, it seems they hoped they would numerically prevail over Croats and Serbs, and thus dictate the lives of these two peoples by sheer majorization, becoming a clear majority from the relative one, 40-45%. This was combined with idealization of the Ottoman rule, the majority of inner leadership of Izit Bagovic's party, consisted of descendants of Muslim landed gentry, Bays, Bagovi, so that historical and proto-national Ottoman emotional, and cultural reflexes, were naturally present among both Bosnian Muslim leadership, and population. The Bosnian-Croat policy was articulated through continual discourse with Croatia's leadership and its party, Croatian Democratic Community, led by former Tito's general and dissident Franjo Tuđman. The context in which Tuđman's Bosnian policy took shape was as follows, with the clearly defined desire of the Serbian population of Bosnia and Herzegovina to join Serbia and Yugoslavia, as well as the Muslim, Bosniak insistence on the concept of a unitary Bosnia, which would be an ideal basis for ethnic territorial majorization, Muslims, who made up 30.73% of the population in 1948, according to the 1991 census, were 43.67% of the total population. In that period, Croats fell from 23.94%, 
to 17.32% and Serbs from 44.29% to 31.37%. Tujman profiled the policy towards Bosnia and Herzegovina as a series of options. One option, in the case of the disintegration of Bosnia, he intended to annex the regions with a Croat majority, with possible separation in parts, Herzegovina, Central Bosnia, and Bosnian Posavina. Other option, in the case of the survival of Bosnia, the goal was a maximally decentralized Bosnia as a state, with insistence on the possibility of expanded cooperation of Croats with Croatia, as well as territorial sovereignty in certain parts, as well as constituent status and sovereignty in the recomposed Bosnia, not only on paper, but also in the elements that make up life, army, police, education economy, cultural institutions. Tujman, like the vast majority of Croats in Bosnia and Herzegovina, who put their trust in the Croatian Democratic Party of Bosnia and Herzegovina, chose the following option. The headquarters and safe strongholds for the defense, preservation and growth of Croats in Bosnia regions where the Croats constituted ethnic majority, most of Herzegovina, central Bosnia and Bosnian Posavina. In other areas, Bosnian Krajina or Turkish Croatia, Sarajevo, Tuzla, the western part of Posavina, the goal was to preserve the Croatian population and help it exercise its rights while relying on the Croatian state and areas controlled by Croats in Bosnia and Herzegovina. In short, Serbia's policy towards Bosnia was, and remains, trivially clear, to destroy the country statehood and annex as much as possible to Greater Serbia. Muslim Bosniak politics oscillated between two options, unitary Bosnia and Herzegovina, dominated by increasingly Islamized Bosniaks, or partition with the aim of creating a Muslim state on as large a part of Bosnia and Herzegovina as possible. Regarding Croatian politics, there were three options at play, division into three states, internal reorganization of Bosnia and Herzegovina into a confederation of three national states, as well as the third, the union of two states, one of which is a Bosnia-Croat hybrid state, federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina. It can be noted that, in addition to American geopolitical goals, the third option was also a sign that Tujman had not sobered up from Starcevic's delusions about Bosnian Muslims as supposedly natural Croatian allies. The establishment of Dayton Bosnia and Herzegovina in the autumn of 1995, with its division of Bosnia into the so-called two entities, the Republic of Srpska and the Bosniak-Croat Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina, reminds one of the division of Bosnia and Herzegovina through the Croatian-Serbian Agreement of 1939, in that period it was the Bosnian Muslims who found themselves in a sandwich between the Croats and Serbs. This time, in Dayton Bosnia, that fate fell upon the Bosnian Croats. The Croats in both entities, have been exposed to majority rule, on the one side from the Serbs, and from the Bosniaks or Muslims from the other. Also, there is District Bruchko, that makes territorial discontinuity of Republika Srpska. The very complicated Dayton constitution, has so far proved itself damaging for the economy of Bosnia, and its culture in general. Croats were divided into two camps, the first camp contains the vast majority in Herzegovina, as well as Croats of southern and central Bosnia, and the second camp has a small segment of Croatian population in Bosniak majority cities, as well as Catholic clergy and population in Sarajevo, and this second camp showed, a greater willingness to change their position to assuage the Bosnian Muslims, something that provoked outrage among most Croats in Bosnia and Herzegovina, who denounced such efforts, as something akin to national treason, interpreting that Franciscans have not succeeded to free themselves from a subservient mental psychological position they were forced to adopt for centuries, during the Ottoman period. 
At the time of the establishment of the Dayton Constitution in Bosnia, a key role was played by international politics. After this politics has shown itself to be damaging, a new initiative of international factors is necessary, in order to open an effective path to the construction of Bosnia as a modern democratic state, with equal individual and collective or ethnic rights, for all its citizens. So far, these initiatives have shown that three Bosnian peoples radically differ in their views on identity, history and future, and that Bosnia is sustainable only as a colony, kept by outside global international forces ad infinitum. Contemporary Bosniaks, Croats and Serbs live in the post dayton Bosnia and Herzegovina as three separate national communities which can be seen, among other things, in culture, history, media, social life, economy and education. They use different textbooks, which is evident from dictionaries they use in tertiary education, as well as with textbooks they use in teaching their national and Bosnian histories. With three peoples differing in culture, language, history, religious national identity, civilizational orientation, aspiration for the future and different interpretation of the past 1,000 years, the only way to live in relative harmony is the consociational model resulting in coexistence of three parallel societies. After the war with such casualties and atrocities the only political system, that could keep these peoples together is a highly decentralized confederal country based on consociational democracy.